In reading, you know, about Doug as part of preparation for the interview, I understand there was a lot of convincing that it took to get you to play the RE role originally. No, what was no, involved with that? No, convincing, is that a joke? No. <laughs> oh, convincing to get well, me to play well, the role. Well, you weren't no. initially it's sold on have, it. Which I always find funny. We have a different story. There was an intermediary, okay. which was our casting director. Our casting director, I think, told Jeremy he had to convince me. I thought I had to convince him. You know, yeah, because so it's that yeah. old game of telephone. So, you know, so but yeah, uh, I mean the reality is that in, uh, the role of Ari was basically one scene in Koi, and you know the focus was really on on the, the boys in the entourage, and and one of the things that one of the many things that Doug is great at is seeing what's working and then taking that and running with it. And I had a real, really great chemistry with Kevin Connolly in the, in, the, in the pilot. And so he just kind of like built on that. And so the role became something bigger. But in the very beginning, it, the, the Ari role was, was a small, very small role. But at the same time, it was in my first script. He was initially, it was my first treatment was Jeremy Piven, who was, I was a fan from Sanders and everything else he did. It was him playing Jeff Jacobs, who was my agent at the time. And it wasn't until, you know, Jeremy had actually transformed himself, gotten into great shape. And then I met Ari, and Ari, well, it was, you know, Jeff Jacobs was more, you know, more of that kind of old Jeremy, you know, Larry Sanders, a little, oh. you know, a little less in shape, you know. <laughs> but, and then I met Ari and Jeremy at the same time, and it was like a, a perfect melt. But the initial thing was Jeremy was going to be this agent. And I always saw, and the one thing I remember saying to you is, um, there's only one thing I'm certain of about this show that I, I, I know how to write for you. I understood his energy and I understood his vibe. So I, I was kind of like, I don't know if anyone else is going to work because I didn't really know anybody else. It was kind of, you know, auditioning and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I felt confident that we were going to do something. And as Jeremy says, this scene in Koi, which was Connolly and, and Jeremy, was the moment I knew that we had a show. The scene that Ari had the biggest speaking role in or just the general episode that's your favorite from all seasons of the show? Uh, there's so many of them. I mean, that's the great thing is, is you know, uh, there's just so many to choose from. Uh, the, the, the turning point moment, I think, probably for my character and for Doug, seeing it and, and maybe for the rest involved was like, you know, in the first season, Busey and the Beach, where there's the great scene where he's gonna dress down Josh Weinstein and it's one continuous steady cam shot all the way through the house ending up with with the monologue um, confronting one, him one of my many times trying to uh, rip off Scorsese but uh, you know it was it was this moment of kind of get your shine box from Goodfellas and <laughs> and Jeremy you know just annihilated that we had you know um, Josh uh, Josh Weinstein was the character's name, yeah. Yes. And it was just this great shot, and, and Jeremy just walked into this house and took over this entire place, and you just felt, you know, exactly what we needed, that kind of King of Hollywood feel, and, you know. And, and I think, and I could be wrong, I don't want to speak for Doug, but I think that was the moment where they knew that this character, that's when the kind of the character kind of broke through, I felt. What, what's involved with getting yourself kind of mentally ready for a scene like that? I mean, I've been in... Doug and I have talked a little bit about this. There are no shortcuts in this life. And I've been doing this my entire life and I've been on the stage since I was eight years old and I was lucky enough to get this role. And I think, you know, like Shakespeare says, and sorry to sound so pretentious, but the readiness is all. And if if you're if you're over pre prepared and you know, and you respect the space that you occupy when you act, which I do, and the words are all there, and it's just brilliant. So, like, you, you have to come to play, and so as an actor, it's like a feast, and this character is so emotionally invested in everything, so it's really, really fun to play. He puts himself out there and is exhausted by the end of the day, and sometimes he really does. He'll, he'll take a computer and throw it across the... the room and I'm like are you yeah. out of your mind why but he gets into it because he's into oh, okay. the character that deep and you know um, as our budgets grew we, we minded that less and less you know first <laughs> season you know a computer would go flying across the room and it was scary you know? but you know and it's and it's my job as an actor every time you're on set to to to, to push it as hard as possible and see what's there and, and you know to leave it all on the field as they say and um, you know it's interesting I was sitting down with this writer and she said, I, I just have to tell you, I didn't like you until I sat down with you. And I was like, oh, well, I, thank you so much. Thank you so much for your honesty. I, you know, she was a woman, older woman, journalist, New York Times, and a very intelligent woman. She said, I didn't like you because I didn't, 
I didn't like the character of Ari Gold. And I said, no, I know, I totally understand that. And I said, but you hadn't met me. She goes, but she said, I didn't think there was any way that you couldn't be that character. Hmm. And what's fascinating is that's what we're trying to achieve. You know, I mean, like Doug's, in, I don't want to speak for you, but one of his intentions was to make it feel, you know, voyeuristic. And it does feel like this world is authentic and it's like a documentary, you know? And so that's our job. So there has been some confusion <laughs> along the way and it's kind of fascinating. Like I take my mom out to dinner and they report on me that I'm screaming at my mother, <laughs> which, you know, um, I haven't talked back to my mother since I was 12 years old, you know? <laughs> and we've had her on set, I've seen it. <laughs> See, she keeps yeah. them in line.